<laughs> thank you, thank you. You've all been a wonderful audience. Hey, how about this one? When a monk throws a punch, it hurts you. When a magus throws a punch, he burns your house down. Howdy. My name is Nonat, and it's finally time for the Magus Feats. If you have not already seen part one of the Magus Deep Dive, I recommend going to check that out, because going over these feats, I will assume you know how Spell Strike works, how the Magus' spell pro pro progression goes, I'm stuttering. This video is like two weeks late, because I had Gen Con, and then I didn't have time to make a long video like this, but now I do, so we're not going to waste any more time. Oh wait, yes we are. Commercial! So Fireball does deal fire damage. Image. Howdy. My name is Nonat. Oh, what am I wearing? Well, it's just the new, new Nonat, Nonat one. One's merchandise. That. That wasn't me. A anyway, it's uh, it's the new Nonat. New Nonat One's merchandise. Okay. Look, I'm just trying to tell them about the new, new Nonat, Nonat One's, one's Merchandise available exclusively at nonatones.com. Yeah. Whatever. I'm done. This ad is stupid. Support the channel. Get yours today. Okay, that's it. Let's go. First level Magus feats, starting with Arcane Fist. You become a monk. Okay, it does a little bit more than that. Uh, instead of dealing 1d4, your fists become 1d6 bludgeoning weapons. You do not take a penalty for trying to deal lethal damage with them, and they gain the arcane trait, so your fists become magical weapons. Plus, at level 5, you get the crit specialization for your fists. There's actually a lot of little bonuses tucked into this level 1 feat, and it's pretty good, and it is a requirement if you plan to make an unarmed magus. Nathan. Familiar. I wonder what that does. Ladies, gentlemen, NBs, I give you the best named feat in the entirety of Secrets of Magic. Magasis Analysis. <laughs> I know they made this feat just so they could say Magasis Analysis, and it rhymes, and it feels great to say. Uh, Magasis Analysis. You may attempt to recall knowledge about a creature, and if you have hit them this turn, you get a plus one to bonus. What did I just say? And if you've already hit that creature this turn, you get a plus one to your recall knowledge check. On top of that, if you successfully recall knowledge on that creature, you recharge your spell strike. This is massive. Unless you just spend an action to recharge it, you can't do it for free. So this basically allows you to recall knowledge whenever you recharge your spell strike. And if you just spell struck something, you can recall knowledge on it with a plus one. You know how much I love uh, recall knowledge synergy and things urging players to use recall knowledge. So this is perfect. And raise a tome, everybody's favorite level one magus feat, because it allows you to use a book as a shield. This is basically raise a shield, spend an action, gain plus two to armor class until the start of your next turn, but it has even more benefits than that. You gain a bonus to recall knowledge on things that relate to the subject of your book. It does specifically say creatures, but I don't see why it couldn't work for architecture and stuff too. But the book specifically has to be about that. So if you're fighting a natural wild animal, but you're holding your arcane tome of spells, well, that's not going to give you a bonus to identify what the heck a jackrabbit is. It's this. Keep in mind that unless you are the Sparkling Targe subclass, you do not begin with Shield Block, but if you gain Shield Block in some manner, you can use your book to block. However, it is pretty weak. It's only Hardness 3 with 12 HP, which means if you're taking more than 15 damage, your book is being torn to shreds. Be careful if that's your spell book, all of your spells are gone and you need to re-scribe them somehow. Good luck. The final line of Raise a Tome is that anything that requires Raise a Shield can be done with Raise a Tome. Level 2, Cantrip Expansion. Everyone knows what it does, and apparently everybody loves it but me. I do not apologize. But I do respect your opinion. Enhanced Familiar. More Familiar Abilities. Expansive Spell Strike does a lot. So let's hunker down and talk about this monster of a feat that tons of people are going to be taking. Put simply, 
Normal spell strike can only be done with spells that require a spell attack roll. Expansive spell strike allows you to spell strike with any harmful spell, but there are a lot of restrictions on how it works. Like a normal spell strike, if you crit fail, you still lose the spell. Creatures still use their normal saving throws. If you attack with something like the fear spell, even if you critically hit, they still get their normal will save against it. If the spell, like the fear spell, can target multiple creatures, it only affects the target of your spell strike. Now where it changes is if the spell has an area. Let me compare two spells like Scorching Ray and Fireball. If you spend two actions to cast Scorching Ray, you can target two creatures with it. However, with Spell Strike, you can't target more than one creature. Now if you Spell Strike with Fireball, you can erupt the Fireball from your Spell Strike, affecting all creatures within the area, with the area being centered on your target. Keep in mind, you are in that area. <laughs> but what this does mean, which can lead to some really cool combos, is cones and lines make very good expansive spell strike options. At level two, you can attack with a burning hand spell strike, hit your target, burn your target, and erupt that 15 foot cone from your target burning everything behind them. There is some cool combos, there is some self-destructive combos like the aforementioned fireball, and it's really neat, and that's why this feat is gonna be taken by so many people, because it's gonna lead to so many unique Magus opportunities that would otherwise be completely unavailable to you. Force Fang teaches you a Conflux spell. Force Fang is a melee magic missile on a focus point spell. It's not bad. For a single action, you replace your weapon with a fang or spike of pure force, and you do not need to roll to attack. You simply deal 1d4 plus 1 force damage to the target. If you have the subclass that allows you to spell strike with a ranged weapon, you can use force fang within that first range increment. This is not a very good spell. Yes, it cannot miss, and that should not be understated that dealing damage that cannot miss is very powerful. But not only does this scale very poorly, it does not recharge your spell strike, it does not really do much for you except consume a focus point and deal 1d4 plus 1 damage. And it only scales every two spell levels. This means at level 20, this is only dealing what? 6d4 plus 6, I think? 5d4 plus 5 at level 20. So a maximum of 25 damage, that can't miss, at level 20. Again, Damage that can't miss needs to be very balanced, otherwise it's just going to be better than damage that can miss. But with Pathfinder 2E's critical hit chance and critical hit rules with the plus 10 system, not even getting a chance to roll and get that crit, I believe actually lowers your average damage. Plus, pretty much every Magus will want to save their focus point to recharge their spell strike with an attack. Maybe that's just my method of thought, but I feel like Force Fang is criminally underpowered. Spell Parry is a very interesting defensive option for Maguses. It's specifically for a one-weapon open-hand Magus, and you spend an action, and until the start of your next turn, not only do you gain a plus one to armor class, but you also gain a plus one to all saving throws against spells. This is just really good. A lot of these similar options for fighters and swashbucklers only give you the AC, so getting a bonus to all three saving throws, granted only against spells, is phenomenal. Spirit Sheath is awesome. Spirit Sheath is useless outside of roleplay. <laughs> no, Spirit Sheath is amazing. It's not gonna do you that much good in combat, Boy, in roleplay scenarios where you need to hide a weapon or just appear unarmed or something, Spirit Sheath is fantastic. Spirit Sheath gives you a sheath for your weapon, regardless of the weapon size, and the sheath does not appear on your body. Rather, you hide it within your clothing. You can take your greatsword and put it in your pocket. You can take your dagger and put it in your collar seam. You can do a lot of different things, and what I love about this feat is that it gets incredibly creative. 
And I love when feats give you the freedom to flavor and describe sort of how the feat works, you know, at your own discretion. Mechanically, this just gives you a plus two to stealth to conceal an item within it. The item also has to be of one bulk or less, so it is very, very limited. How this does help a little bit is it does let you quick draw into a spell strike at the start of combat. So it does have its uses in combat, granted it's not going to necessarily win an entire fight for you. Basically, rather than spending an action to draw your weapon and then spell striking for two actions, you can draw into the spell strike all for two actions for some pretty decent action economy if you're caught off guard. My favorite part of this feat is that if you get hit by a Dispel Magic check and it succeeds, your Spirit Sheath stops working and your weapon pops out of your body. So if you've got a greatsword shoved into your little armpit seam and they Dispel Magic, then thunk, it's popping out of your armpit onto the ground and that's just funny to me. Devastating Spell Strike is a phenomenal upgrade to the Spell Strike ability, specifically for the Inexorable Iron Hybrid Study, which is the subclass if for some reason you didn't watch part 1. So long as you are in Arcane Cascade stance and you have a Spell Strike ready, you can Spell Strike and you deal so much magical force to the target that it splashes to all adjacent creatures specifically foes, so it does not jump onto your allies. If you hit a target with your spell strike, all foes adjacent to that target take two plus your arcane cascade damage. That's not bad. At level four, that's three extra damage to every adjacent foe with no way to dodge it. There's no saving throw. You don't have to attack them. They just take the damage. Additionally, if you're attacking with something that has splash damage, like Acid Splash, that splash damage is added together. It's not done separately, so they can't resist them separately. It's all the same type. Very good feat. Distracting Spell Strike for the Laughing Shadow subclass is marginally less interesting. You have to be in Arcane Cascade Stance and have a hand free, and if you use Spell Strike, you can faint for free. This isn't bad by any means, but it's not going to change your turn all that much because you probably would have just fainted and then spell striked. Now you can sort of do it all for two actions. I'm never going to look a gift horse in the mouth for better action economy. Just after devastating spell strike, seeing distracting spell strike is a little bit of a letdown. Emergency Targe is pretty typical. If you're the Sparkling Targe subclass and you get hit by a spell attack roll or a melee attack or fail a saving throw, you can immediately raise a shield or cast the shield spell, which is very, very cool, and apply the appropriate bonuses. And remember, if you are the Sparkling Targe and you raise a shield, you get that shield bonus to your saving throws as well, so this could potentially turn a failure into a success. Keep that in mind. Starlet Eyes is a basic upgrade for the Starlet Span subclass, which is the ranged Magus, and it makes you better at shooting concealed and hidden targets by lowering the DC of the flat check to successfully target them. The big upgrade, however, is if you use their focus spell, Shooting Star, to attack a hidden target, you automatically successfully target them. You do not even need to roll the flat check and you can shoot a hidden target as though they were completely visible. Very good upgrade for their focus spell. If for some reason you don't want to upgrade your subclass, you can take steady spell casting. Striker scroll is really cool. It's unfortunate that you need a feat to do this, but it's still pretty neat. If you have a spell scroll, you can wrap it around your weapon and spell strike with it. The big problem with this is that you can't do it in the middle of combat. You need to take the affix a talisman action, which off the top of my head, I believe takes one minute. It's either one or 10 minutes to carefully fold it around and place it on your weapon. You can't just slap it on your weapon and go. Strangely, I don't know what the rules are about casting a spell as part of spell strike. Whenever I GM'd before Secrets of Magic came out, I, well actually it was my friend who was GMing, I was playing an Eldritch Archer, and they were allowing me to cast a spell with a scroll as part of the three action spell strike with my bow, because technically bows are one handed until you make the strike. So you cast the spell and then fire it through the arrow. It was always a little bit weirdly gray and it still kind of is. This feat makes it sound like you cannot do that without the feat, 
but I don't know, it's always something that I thought just sounded cool, and I would have let a Magus do it even without this feat, so I don't know how I feel about this one. Student of the Staff is interesting, and is obviously for the Twisting Tree subclass. First off, it allows you to put property runes onto a magical staff, which is usually not allowed. So if you have a Staff of Fire, you can actually imbue it with weapon runes to make it into a physical weapon, along with having the ability to cast spells from it. You also get the crit specialization of the club group when you crit, and so long as you're in Arcane Cascade, your staff gains deadly d6, so it's just doing bonus damage on critical hits, so mostly this just makes staffs better at critically hitting. Not too exciting, but still pretty good. Attack of Opportunity. It's an attack of opportunity. Cascade Countermeasure grants you a focus spell of the same name. This is actually a pretty solid focus spell. For one action, so long as you are in Arcane Cascade, you gain 5 damage resistance against all spells. Just straight up all spells. And this lasts until you are out of Arcane Cascade. This is phenomenal. The only downside is that it only gets heightened at character level 11 and 9... 7? 17. It does increase by 5 though. This will be at its most powerful right when you get it and will fall off a little bit, but it'll never be bad to have. If you have the extra focus point and you have the uh, Arcane Cascade stance already, you might as well pop this on if you're fighting any kind of spellcaster. Knowledge's Power is a very good feat, but it is one that I see a lot of people are going to forget about. If you ever critically succeed at a Recall Knowledge check against a creature, you gain three separate bonuses, which can be a lot to keep track of in the middle of combat. You gain plus one to your next attack roll against it, plus one to your armor class against only its next attack against you, and plus one against your saving throw against its next effect against you. So not only are you trying to remember these three different plus ones, but you're trying not to confuse them with other creatures, and this can get a little bit messy, and this is the kind of design I'm not a big fan of. Because I typically don't like things that only give you defense against a specific target's next attack, but if it's only one benefit, it's usually not too big a deal. Granting three separate benefits that only apply to a single creature can get a little bit messy and tough for players and the GM to keep track of. So very good feat, but can make combat a little bit messy. Shielded Tome, super simple. You take a shield, you take a book, book shield. Basically, you combine a book and a shield into the same item. You can have it take the form of a shield or the form of the book, which means if it's in book form and you can use raise a tome, or if you don't have raise a tome, oh, you need to raise a tome. But if it's in shield form, you can raise it and say it's like a, a fancy magical shield. While it's in shield form, you can activate its shield abilities and then morph it back to a book and use it to maybe gain the bonus to recall knowledge like we talked about back at level one. Very flexible, very cool, and I just like the idea of taking two items and... Capture Magic at level 8. As a reaction, if you either succeed at a saving throw against an opponent's harmful effect, or they miss you with a spell attack roll, you can use the energy of that spell to enter into Arcane Cascade. This is so freaking cool, as the damage of Arcane Cascade matches their spell. I love this concept of utilizing another caster's magic to fuel your Magus stance rather than your own. Even cooler, if you're already in Arcane Cascade, you can use your reaction, capture the magic, and power up your Arcane Cascade until the end of your next turn, giving you a plus two bonus to Arcane Cascade's damage. This is amazing if you combine this with Inexorable Iron, which deals the big splash damage, that plus two bonus is applying to everything you splash. This is incredible. Fused Staff is amazing. If you've ever wanted a weapon that can cast spells like a staff, Fuse Staff is for you. This is very similar to the combining the book and shield feat from earlier, except you combine a magical spell casting staff with any weapon in the game. Unfortunately, this is not as cool as I initially thought. This does not give you a dagger that can throw fireballs. It does, however, give you a dagger that can use the charges from the staff for spell striking. 
If you have a staff of fire with, say, fireball in it, and you mix it with your dagger, you can spell strike with fireball, even though that's a terrible idea, unless you're immune to fire damage. Unfortunately, you cannot use the dagger to shoot the fireball unless you switch it back to its staff form. It's a cool feat, it's very limited, and there's specifically stuff in here saying that nobody else can use the magic in its weapon form except the Magus who fused them, so there's no like game-breaking combos of making something for your allies, but it's still a cool idea. I'm just sad I can't fling Magic Missile out of my Great Club. Runic Impression gets you a Conflux spell of the same name. For a single action and a focus point, you touch yourself or a weapon you are wielding and grant it the effects of one weapon rune for one minute. You can give yourself or any weapon Corrosive, Flaming, Frost, Ghost Touch, Returning, Shock, or Thundering. So aside from Returning and Ghost Touch, you're basically just saying, here, have 1d6 bonus elemental damage of some kind, which is not bad at all. I'm just sad that it is limited to your own weapons, but the Magus is a very selfish class, so it does fit the identity. That sounded like a really hot take at Magus players. I promise that's not what I meant. Unfortunately, this does not bypass the rune maximum on a weapon. If your weapon already has too many property runes, then you have to suppress one to get the one from Runic Impression. This is still really good though. If you leave a slot empty, or even not leave it empty, but just have a rune you're fine with suppressing against a specific target, you can do a lot of cool stuff with your weapon and give it the appropriate element against the appropriate creature all the time. This is a fantastic thing to have in your back pocket, and the fact that it lasts for a full minute is incredible. Just be careful, if you get disarmed, it will end the spell. Also, at character level 17, 15, character level 15, I don't do two takes, character level 15, uh, you get the upgraded versions of all of the different types here, as well as the Keen rune. Pretty cool. Spell swipe is cool, and is for a specific type of spell strike, which makes sense. For three actions, you use your spell strike and target two creatures within your melee reach. You attack both of them separately, and if the spell cast in your spell strike can target multiple creatures, like the aforementioned Scorching Ray, you can hit both of them with that spell. However, if the spell you're using only allows a single target, such as produce flame, you cannot use produce flame on both of them. You still make a melee strike against both at the same attack bonus, which is huge, but produce flame will only affect one of them. Likewise, with area of effect abilities like fireball, you pick one of the targets to be the source of the area, not both. So really good, amazing with spells that do have multiple targets, but not that worth it otherwise. Though again, a second attack at full multiple attack penalty, I think most people would take that for three actions if that was an option. Two attacks, full bonus, three actions, that would be overpowered if anyone could do it. Fighters! Standby spell is boring, but reliable. Uh, you pick one spell in your spell book. You do not need to prepare this spell and can effectively sacrifice any of your prepared spells that day to cast that one instead. If you just love having Fireball ready, Fireball can be your standby spell. And even if you prepared Magic Missile and Scorching Ray, you can replace Scorching Ray with Fireball at any time during the day and cast that instead. What is nice is you can choose a different spell simply by studying for an hour. So you can almost think of this as similar to the wizard thesis that allows you to swap something out. It just takes a little bit longer. Cascading Ray is an okay damage option for the Magus. For a single action, if your last action was a successful spell strike that specifically dealt energy damage, you can make a spell attack roll against a single creature that was not damaged by your spell strike. So, if you hit a creature with Produce Flame, you can target any creature within 60 feet of your target, and a solid ray of energy shoots out, kind of connecting them, and deals 1d4 damage per spell level of the spell cast. If you're level 10 when you take this, then your level 5 Produce Flame will deal 5d4 damage to the other target. And since it's a cantrip, you could do this every turn if you wanted to. 
What's fantastic is if you use a spell slot specifically with your spell strike, it gets upgraded to D8s. So if you use Scorching Ray with your spell strike, then your Cascading Ray at level 10 will now be dealing 5D8 damage to the secondary target. Fantastic way to disperse your damage. The only downside is that Cascading Ray is a spell attack roll, and Maguses do progress a little bit slower. I think they max out at Master Spell Casting, and you're going to have that minus five from the multiple attack penalty because you did a spell strike. Now where, who, who, where this gets messy, and I don't know what the rules are supposed to be, is the requirements. Your last action was a successful spell strike. Does this mean at the end of my last turn, I did a spell strike? At the start of my next turn, when my multiple attack penalty is gone, can I then Cascading Ray for 5d8 against somebody else? Because personally, from a cinematic standpoint, that doesn't make sense. Because you hit them, and then six seconds go by, and then the ray flies out. Whereas, I know what's intended is you strike them, the spell explodes, and the ray shoots off from the spell effect. Now, there's all the arguments of like, oh, it's all happening at the same time, so it does make sense, but it's hard with initiative in perspective. I don't know, I would love Paizo clarification on this. Can you end your turn with a spell strike and start your next turn with a cascading ray? I need to know. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Dazzling Block is hilarious. Whenever you use Shield Block in Arcane Cascade Stance, specifically for the Sparkling Targe study, you can just blind everyone in front of you in a 15-foot cone. They all make fortitude saves, and either nothing happens on a crit success, dazzled on a success, blinded for a round on a failure, and dazzled for a minute, though they can get rid of the blinded by rubbing their eyes, or if they crit fail, they are blinded for a round and dazzled for an hour. This would be a hilarious getaway feature. I can honestly see the rogue stabbing at the Magus so that the Magus just blocks it and uses shield block to blind some enemies in front of them. There could be a whole fun thing there, and I love the idea. If anybody's played League of Legends, Dimensional Disappearance is Shaco. <laughs> when you cast the Dimensional Assault Focus spell and teleport half your speed, you are invisible! You can also choose not to attack the target and stay invisible. There's also no duration listed on Dimensional Disappearance, which means you're just affected by the raw invisibility spell, which lasts 10 minutes. GMs, I forever apologize for the chaotic neutral maguses of the Laughing Shadow subclass who rob an innkeeper take all their money and dimensional disappearance out the window and sneak off. I don't know how you stop a player like this without crazy powerful NPCs that can see invisibility. This is gonna get abused. This is gonna go down in history as the murder hobo's best feat in Pathfinder 2e. You kill an innocent and then immediately dimensional assault with your leftover action, you're gone. Scott free. Unless you left evidence at the crime scene, you're good. They're not going to connect you. They don't have FP. I don't like this spell. I do. It's really, really strong. It's just going to be so abused. Lunging Spell Strike is really cool, and if you like some traditional Japanese extending staff mythology, this is for you, or if you're a weeb who watches Dragon Ball. Uh, for two actions, you make a Spell Strike. If you're the Twisting Tree Hybrid study specifically, you attack with your staff, and your staff increases its reach by five times the spell level. It already has a five foot reach. If you're casting a level five spell, you now have a 35 foot reach melee spell strike. If you're level 20 and you cast a level 10 spell with this, that is a 55 foot reach melee spell attack and I'm here for it. Meteoric Spell Strike is 
pretty good. I wouldn't call it amazing, but if you are the Starlet Span hybrid study and you make a ranged spell strike against a target and hit, then all creatures between you and your target take damage equal to double the spell's level. If you cast a 5th level spell, then all of them are taking unavoidable 10 damage. The big drawback, and it's understandable from a balance perspective, is that they cannot be cantrips or focus spells. Maguses are really, really limited on their spell slots, so you won't get to make a huge use of this too often, but combine this with some party members that can really line enemies up for you, and you can get some crazy damage. Also, I did line. You don't even have to hit, you just have to cast it, so the damage is guaranteed even if you miss the target of your spell strike. Rapid Recharge. Once per day, you can recharge your spell strike as a free action. What you see is what you get. It's good. Boring. It's good. Sustaining Steel is interesting. As long as you are in your Arcane Cascade stance as an inexorable Iron Magus, rather than just gaining temporary hit points, you can regain hit points equal to double the spell's level. This is not bad. You also get a chance to roll to end any persistent negative damage you may be suffering from. In addition, if the spell you cast is from the Necromancy School, you don't even need to roll. You can just end the negative damage right away. So hey, with four spell slots, this effectively gives the inexorable Iron Magus at level 10, about 26 hit points they can recover per day. That's if they don't have any way to get spell slots back or whatnot. That's pretty good. 12th level's Conflux Focus, you get two focus points back instead of one. Pretty typical. Magic Sense, you are permanently affected by a first level detect magic spell, and whenever you use the Seek action, it gets up to the third level, which I believe tells you the school of the strongest source of magic. Pretty useful, pretty cool. You can also turn it off and on at will in case you want to stop hearing ping, magic, ping, magic, ping, magic, ping when you're in the wizard school. That would get annoying. Overwhelming Spell Strike is pretty typical for a caster. It allows you to ignore resistance to the spell's damage equal to the spell's level. And as always, this is incredibly useful because it counts on persistent damage as well. If you cast a fire spell that deals persistent fire damage, you can make the target lose resistance to that persistent fire damage and keep taking it. Very nice. Equal to your level, not the spell's level, sorry. So even better. Arcane Shroud is really, really, really good, and if you have this ability, you can Spell Strike, and for a single action, you gain the effect of a fairly decently powerful spell until the end of your next turn. The spell effect you gain depends on the school of the spell you cast. I'm going to try to go over these quickly. Some of these might be wrong because I don't remember these off the top of my head, but I'm kind of using this as a test to see if I remember what each of these spells does. If you cast Abjuration, you get Stone Skin, which gives you resistance to damage. Blink gives you resistance to damage as well, though less than Stone Skin, but it's to all damage. See Invisibility. Duh. Heroism gives you a flat bonus to everything. Fire Shield deals damage to melee attackers that attack you. Invisibility. Duh. False Life gives you temporary hit points, and Fleet Step gives you a 5 foot movement speed bonus. I think those are all right. This is amazing. You can, you can do it once per turn. Granted, you need to cast a spell from a spell slot or spell strike from a spell slot, but this is still crazy good. Being able to just give yourself heroism for a turn? Wow. Hasted Assault, a conflux spell. Hasted Assault is really simple. It's haste as a focus spell. You quicken yourself for one minute. You can only use it on strike actions, but it's haste as a focus spell. Now, interestingly, I don't know the rules on this. Hasted Assault specifically says you can only use your extra action for strike actions. Does spell strike count as a strike action? I need clarification and you guys are smarter than me, so uh, tell me. <laughs> Preternatural Parry is good, but I don't know if it's level 14 good. As a reaction, if you're about to be hit by a strike, spell attack, or make a saving throw against a spell, you can use your reaction to give yourself plus two to armor class or all saving throws against the triggering effect until the start of your next turn. This is great. You know who else gets this? Level one rogues, but they don't get to increase their saving throws. I feel like this is good, 
and the Magus is not a defensive class, so it makes sense they would get this kind of option at a higher level because they're not defensive, and if they want to be defensive, they need to wait a little bit longer to get those options. So I'm torn. This is not an amazing feat, but I think it is perfectly balanced. Dispelling Spell Strike is pretty good. For three actions instead of two, you make a normal Spell Strike, but in addition to all the damage you're dealing, you get to make a counteract check against a single magical effect on the target. Keep in mind, this means you can use it against innocent people who are maybe being mind controlled. If they're under a controlling spell or magical effect, you can dispelling spell strike them and then counteract it because you're just so nice. Resounding Cascade is cool. As a free action, when you enter into Arcane Cascade, all adjacent allies gain the bonus damage on their attacks as well. Now, they only gain the base effect of Arcane Cascade. If you have any feats or subclasses that alter or affect it, they do not gain that bonus. Only the flat, I think, one plus two from Greater Weapon Specialization. But giving all allies that are adjacent to you plus three damage to all of their attacks and its flavored damage like fire or electricity, this is a game changer. If you're up in there with the fighter and the barbarian and they're each dealing three additional fire damage on every attack, that is huge! Conflux Wellspring. You get to refocus three instead of one. Versatile Spell Strike is fine, but it's a lot worse on a Magus than something like a wizard. You basically sacrifice one of your highest level spell slots to prepare one that is two levels lower but you can cast from that slot like a sorcerer. Any spell you know can be cast from that slot, but again, it is two levels lower. If you're level 18 and you have ninth level spells, you can prepare a seventh level spell, but can be any seventh level spell you know. So it's really good, it's very versatile, it's sacrificing power for versatility, it's balanced, and I don't like it. <laughs> Supreme Spell Strike. Do you like spell striking? Do you wish you could do it every turn? Well, now you are permanently quickened, and you can only use that extra action to recharge your spell strike. So this is just every turn you can move, spell strike, recharge. Move, spell strike, recharge. Overpowered as heck, and I love it. Whirlwind Spell is basically better than Expansive Spell Strike, where Expansive Spell Strike lets you attack two targets with the same spell. Whirlwind Spell allows you to target all creatures within your reach. So that's typically going to be a max of six targets, but if you're large, you can target a lot more creatures within your reach. Now again, similar to Expansive Spell Strike, this does not work for single target spells or area spells. It specifically needs to be spells that say targets up to six creatures. Then you can use War One Spell. And unfortunately, I don't think there's a lot of options for that, but that's not a big deal to me because this is a level 20 feat. So at that point, you have access to all of those options, probably. So even if there's only three or four spells that qualify for this, it's still a feat that you have to choose to take, and then you will obviously choose to prepare one of those spells that can do it, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. What is really sad and makes a lot of sense Whirlwind Spell does not work with Starlet Span, so Starlet Span is pretty much stuck to the auto-recharge spell strikes. Wah. And that's Magus! Do you see why I made this a part two? I have an hour of footage! This is gonna be a 40 minute video! You're welcome! Okay, actually, the video's not quite over yet. Thank you to my patrons for supporting me. Thank you for watching. If you're interested, check out my <laughs> website. Oh, what am I doing? I don't know, this is a one-take outro. Let's go. Check out the links in the description. There's one to my website where you can check out all of our merchandise and cool website things. There's links to my Patreon, my Discord. If you want to be a cool supporter like the people who flew by, you can check that out. And if you pledge $20 or more, you can get your name up in this cool little list here. $10 or more gets you access to my custom homebrew every month. Thank you all so much. I'm so tired. It's been a long day. It's been a productive day. So I'm going to wrap this video up by saying thank you all very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, no nat ones.